A reading from Psalm 78. Listen, my people, mark each word. I begin with a story. I speak of mysteries welling up from ancient depths, heard and known from our elders. We must not hide this story from our children, but tell the mighty works and all the wonders of God. Welcome. Welcome to our service of Good Friday and of the reading of the seven last words of Christ. Grateful to see you all and grateful to be with you. And a message from the deacons of the First Church Ipswich, which is as we think about this very crazy and lonely and isolating time and dangerous, the deacons ask that all members and people do our very best to help each other stay healthy if you need a mask, let the church know and we'll make sure you have one. If you need help thinking about six feet of separation, let us know and we'll help you with that. And so now, let us begin. The first word comes from the Gospel of Luke in the 23rd chapter. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leader scoffed at him saying, he saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. Let us pray. Holy God, hear our prayers for the leaders, some of whom may be scoffing, some of whom may be in deep, deep pain. Hear our prayers for the political leaders of this landscape on this wild and dangerous time. May they be blessed with wisdom. May your Holy Spirit fill them. And hear our prayers for the leaders of health. May every single one of them be knitted together with power and strength and courage. Hear our prayers for the leaders of the Spirit. May your wisdom inspire them with grace and strength beyond all measure and may we all become leaders of the spirit O holy god as we draw close to close to your goodness and your wisdom your truth your compassion your suffering and your mercy amen The second word comes from the Gospel of Luke in the 23rd chapter. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? 
And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Let us pray. Holy God, hear our prayers for the dying. Even as we think of the day, the hour on which Jesus himself died, may your compassion and mercy and company be with all those in this world who are dying this day. May our hearts go out to them too, even as our hearts go out to you. And we pray with this promise of paradise, O God, that Jesus gave to the criminal that too we might be folded into your promise of hope, of life, of something there is that is beautiful to come. We give you thanks for your holy companionship, O holy God, for all of the dying. Amen. The third word comes from the Gospel of John in the 19th chapter. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Let us pray. Oh, dear Jesus, we remember how you took care of your mother, even when you were dying. Made sure she had a place so she wouldn't be homeless or without a son to be her people, her advocate, her protector. And we thank you for that, and we pray for all the mothers in this world who might be lost without an advocate, that you'll be there for them, and that you'll help the neighbors and the friends and the religious groups of all the stripes be there for those ancestors who might be lost, those mothers, those fathers, those aunts or uncles or family members who might have nowhere to go. Here are prayers, too, of thanksgiving for the power of our elders, our ancestors, those who've gone before us of the land, of our family, of your knitting together. We thank you for them. We pray we might be as Jesus was, thinking of them even in our hard times. Bless us all, O God. Hold us in your love and help us remember each other. Amen. The fourth word comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Let us pray. Holy God, we pray for all those who feel forsaken. We pray for those who are lonely in their homes this year. Those, those who have no children running around messing up their kitchens. Those who have no grandmother to look after in the dining room. Those who have not enough work to do to keep them busy. Those who weep and look out their windows. May your merciful company be with them. Even as we think of you on the cross when you yourself felt the supreme loneliness, 
And may the community draw into those lonely ones too. May the neighbors notice from the street corners and wave. May the churches, the synagogues, the mosques, all the groups lean in and know who there is that needs us. Knit us all together, O oh God, and bind us in your covenant of love. And help us remember that your loneliness is a bit of a company for ours, and we're not isolated altogether. We thank you for this day. Amen. The fifth word comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 28 and 29. After this, Jesus, when he knew that all was now finished, said, I'm thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. Let us pray. O oh God who knows all things, hear our prayers for the people who are thirsty this day. O oh Christ who felt the pain of thirst on his death, hear our prayers for those who are in deep pain of thirst or hunger too. O oh Spirit who dwells in the hearts of all of the children of the earth, Hear our prayers for those who have no place to live or who have no food in the cupboard or no clean water in the bucket. We pray for their bellies. We pray for their throats, for their whole bodies. And we pray for the mercy of clean water to be a miracle for them. And that the hands of the neighbors and friends and political systems and leaders might know the depth of their thirst and change, and that you by miracle too might minister to them with your compassion and your presence and your love. Amen. The sixth word comes from the Gospel of John in the 19th chapter. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Let us pray. Holy God, hear our prayers for the dying, for the people across this whole planet who are struggling perhaps with this virus that we don't understand very well, or perhaps with some other ailment that may plague them, whether it be cancer or AIDS or Luke Gehrig's disease or depression, any of the many diseases that hurt your children. And here are prayers too for the dying who are not human but are in this planet looking for a tree to roost in or a cold sea to swim in for the polar bears, for the migrating creatures, fish and birds. We pray for your advocacy and company for all of us, for your help, your lessons, for your wisdom. Holy God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The seventh word, comes from the Gospel of Luke in the 23rd chapter. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, when the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last.
Let us join our souls and hearts and minds in a silent prayer. I read to you now from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the peace of the winding road be under your feet. And may the peace of the shining stars be over your heads. And may the peace of the warm wind be always at your backs. And may the deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you body, mind, and spirit this day and every day. Amen.